we're going to be relatively brief here. Thank you for being here. I'm going to ask um, Victoria, who is responsible for uh, drafting this uh, significant report here, um, to uh, make a couple opening statements, and I'm going to have a few things to say. And then, um, and then we're going to get down to the business of how we implement all this. Okay. Thank Victoria, you. floor is yours. When Congress created this office, the Office of the First United States Intellectual Property Enforcement Coordinator, they envisioned an ambitious plan on intellectual property enforcement. And I am proud to sit here today and say that this administration has delivered such a plan. First, let me thank the Vice President for his leadership. I also want to thank the Cabinet members and their excellent teams for the long hours they have committed and will continue to commit to protecting America's ideas and ingenuity. We received and reviewed more than 1,600 public comments in putting together this strategy, all of which are on our website for you to read. These responses describe the problems facing the American workers, artists, engineers, and scientists, and provided many recommendations for how their government could help. I met face to face with the people who live with these issues day to day. The small businesses concerned about losing jobs to counterfeiting, the clean tech company whose investors are concerned about theft overseas, and entertainment production workers and technicians whose pension funds are at risk as piracy drains their funding. These meetings with and comments from the public helped us to identify 33 action items to combat intellectual property infringement. These fall into six broad categories. First. We will lead by example, and we will ensure that the United States government does not use infringing products. Second, we will be transparent, and we will ensure that the public has good information about our policies and our actions. Third, we will improve coordination to increase our efficiency and our effectiveness. Fourth, we will work with foreign governments to enforce our rights overseas. We will go after foreign-based websites and other entities that violate American intellectual property rights, and we will prioritize enforcement in important foreign markets such as China. Fifth, we will secure our domestic supply chain, give law enforcement more authority, and we will encourage voluntary cooperation by the private sector to reduce infringing products that are entering our country through our borders and over the Internet. Finally, we will collect better, better data so that we understand the jobs and the exports that are tied to intellectual property. And we will also assess, assess our laws to ensure they are as effective as possible in order to combat theft of our ideas and our creativity. As a result of what we, the United States government, are, have committed to do in this plan, I say to those that are suffering from infringement, help is on the way. We understand the problems that you face, and we will work to make things better. We will protect you so that you can get back to doing what you do best, which is developing America's next great idea. To those who have for too long abused the rights of America's creators, I have a warning for you. We are committed to putting you out of business. Now that we have unveiled our first joint strategic plan on intellectual property enforcement, the hard work of implementing it begins to ensure that we are protecting our citizens, our businesses, and our workers. I look forward to working with the President, the Vice President, the Cabinet members, the Congress, and our public as we move forward with the goal of protecting America's intellectual property rights and the American jobs, growth, and prosperity that come with them. Thank, Thank you, you very much. And by the way, thanks for this report. This is a, uh, a really thorough report. I've been doing, uh, I've been engaged in this back in the days as Chairman of the uh, Judiciary Committee. Uh, I've been engaged in this for a long, long time. The problem's not new. It's getting worse, but the problem's not new. And uh, one of the things that's been lacking, in my view, is a comprehensive approach in getting everybody in the deal. Uh, and uh, so what we're going to be talking about later is how we implement some of these 30-plus recommendations. But, uh, um, you know, uh, it, to state it very bluntly, uh, and obviously, piracy hurts. It hurts our economy to the tune of billions, some argue tens of billions of dollars in lost private sector profit and government revenue. It hurts our health and safety. The health and safety, that's where the FDA commissioner is here, in part. But we don't usually think of it this way. It hurts the health and safety of our citizens. We need to protect our citizens from unsafe products, counterfeit auto parts, semiconductors used in medical devices that aren't uh, quality tested, uh, counterfeit pharmaceuticals that put lives at risk. Uh, whether we're talking about uh, fake drugs that, uh, that hurt instead of help a patient or knock off car tires that fall apart at 65 miles an hour causing injury and death, counterfeits kill. Counterfeits kill. 
there's a reason why um, that uh, they counterfeit. Uh, they don't know how to do it in the first place. And uh, so it, uh, and it also, to state the obvious, it stifles creativity. Perhaps our greatest export, perhaps our greatest export is America's creative impulse. Our ability to move people around the world through creativity works. It's been working. It's had dramatic impact on cultures. It's had dramatic impact on our interest. And, and criminals are working every day, every day to steal it from us. And it, again, it's billions of dollars. And uh, look, uh, we used to avoid saying this uh, in this town. Piracy is theft, clean and simple. It's nothing but theft. It's smash and grab. No different than the guy walking down, you know, Fifth Avenue and smashing the window of Tiffany's and reaching in and grabbing what's in the window. This is theft, clear and simple. And theft in every culture, people would acknowledge, should be punished. And uh, so intellectual property is no different. We need uh, a true government-wide effort, and that's what's being proposed here, uh, to deal with this pervasive theft. In December, we, uh, we met, and, uh, um, and I said, uh, with uh, the President's instruction and my long-time commitment and all of us around here, that we had to crack down on this. We had to come up with a government-wide plan. And all the members of the Cabinet had to take the challenge seriously. They have, they are, and they will. Customs has made nearly 10,000 seizures. That's 30 percent increase compared to last year. Over the last six months, the Department of Homeland Security, Immigration, and Customs Enforcement has, has been really hard at work. It made 166 arrests, seized goods values at, valued at 350 million bucks. DHS has also uh, formed a, a national network of international, international property theft enforcement teams around the country. It didn't exist before, 22 of them. Uh, and they include 70 federal, state, and local law, law partners uh, working together to deal with intellectual, intellectual property theft. Look, the Intellectual Property Rights Center at Homeland Security is working uh, with the private sector to target uh, criminals stealing and, uh, and posting their movies on the Internet uh, before uh, they're even released in movie theaters. Hard to believe it. I mean, literally, they're, they're selling this so you can buy some of these breakthrough movies on the streets of China before they're shown in the first movie theater here in the United States. Not just China, by the way. I'm not picking on China. There's a lot of other countries, including some of our close allies. Uh, where they haven't acted appropriately. The Department of Justice has appointed 20 additional uh, FBI special agents dedicated to IP enforcement. These agents join the 31 agents already deployed uh, to field offices around the country devoted to investigating intellectual property theft. DOJ has appointed <coughs> another, uh, appointed 15 new prosecutors uh, to get engaged in this fight. And everyone around this table has taken steps to fight piracy, but we've got to do more, and that's what we're here to discuss. Again, we have a clear game plan, and it's about implementing this game plan. Today, uh, uh, as we've uh, just, been, uh, just been stated, in unveiling this game plan, um, we've got to figure out now the detail of how to implement it even though everybody was involved in the formation of this plan. The strategy is evidenced, uh, as stated already, as 33. 33 specific <coughs> items, and I just want to highlight a few, and then we'll, I'll end. Federal law enforcement is beginning to target websites and others that are trafficking in pirated goods. And we have made sure that the countries in which these websites emanate from know that we want those sh sites shut down. Now, the difference here is we've talked about that before the country. We're going to shine a light now. If the website is open, if it's clearly involved in piracy in a country that's not taking action, we're going to be as public as we possibly can about the fact they're not acting and there needs to be action. As we shine a spotlight on foreign governments that have rogue actors doing illicit business within their borders, it's the government's responsibility to respond. And we'll be proposing legislation <coughs> that's in the process of being drafted now to require companies to notify the FDA when they find counterfeit products. Right now, that's not a requirement. The company, and, and there's incentives not to, not to 
let the FDA know, because they're worried about brand, they're worried about their, their reputations, they're worried. But they, we want a requirement, a requirement that, uh, that the FDA has to be notified when any company finds uh, a counterfeit products among their products and give the FDA the ability uh, to track those products. We're setting up a government-wide working group to make sure our supply chain is free of counterfeit products. Now, look, whether we're talking about fake Kevlar vests, and they are fake Kevlar vests being purchased, sold and purchased in the United States of America, or a bolt that fails on an airplane engine, we can't afford to purchase fake goods. This is not just about whether or not the new Robin Hood movie, which is a multi-million dollar theft, if you take a look at it that way. It's not just about whether or not our our creative talent is being affected. It's about whether or not you put a Kevlar vest on a guy in Kandahar or a cop in the middle of one of our major cities, whether it works. And so we, uh, we just uh, want to make it real clear. Uh, we're going after people. We're going after the websites. We're going to go after those folks who, in fact, uh, sell us things that, in fact, have the effect of putting the lives of Americans in jeopardy. The U.S. government also has to step in uh, uh, in place to ensure that our agencies uh, only use legal software. I know that sounds crazy, but we, and within the federal government, we are scrubbing all the agencies to make sure whatever software they're using is not counterfeit, to make sure it is legal, it's real, it's the initial product, it's what it says it is. And we want now to go well beyond what we're doing in each of the agencies and anyone who contracts with us to do a federal project, to work with the federal government, to ensure that they, they are only using the real deal and not a counterfeit, which is cheaper, but also not reliable. We need to make the private sector, uh, we, we, we need the private sector to weigh in even more. Um, to address online theft of intellectual property. Counterfeit drugs are a scourge and our consumers aren't uh, safe and, and they don't know what they're buying online many times. I applaud Google, Yahoo, and Bing uh, for the steps they've taken in recent weeks to stop selling advertising to illegal internet pharmacies. Uh, but, but we need to go further. It's time for others uh, to step up to. It's time to stop supporting ads for drugs sold illegally over the internet and, uh, and for a simple reason, for the public health of American, of our population. And so look, the internet uh, delivery companies and movies, television, and recording industries all tell me that we need to have a strong and fair effort in supporting illegal downloads online. There are discussions going on right now between the content community and the internet service providers. Everyone needs to be working together and pulling their way to fight uh, the harm that is done to our economy and our people by this uh, intellectual property theft. And we hope that we can find a practical and effective way uh, to reduce piracy online. But it takes cooperation between the content community as well as the internet service providers. Not easy, but absolutely necessary. Again, there are 33 items in this report that uh, has been done, 33 specific recommendations, 33 ways uh, we commit ourselves uh, um, to, uh, um, to deal with this scourge. And we're making progress. I've been around a while. It's good news in the AFL-CIO the Chamber of Commerce and law enforcement and other diverse groups all are on the same page. That is a very encouraging development. And, uh, and now, uh, <laughs> I'm not joking about that. And uh, now it's time, uh, we, we have to bear down on implementing these recommendations. That's what when you all leave, we're gonna be talking about. And uh, I thank you uh, for taking the time to uh, help us, quite frankly, uh, get the word out. Uh, to the American public, but also to the counterfeiters that uh, uh, we're serious about this. Thank you all very, very much.